In this episode of In the Trenches with Dave Lapham brought to you by First Star Logistics, we catch up with the legendary Marty Brenneman, Hall of Fame broadcaster. Part one here of our visit with Marty Brenneman is going to include his years as a North Carolina Tar Heel. Now, he graduated from University of North Carolina. He did North Carolina basketball. In fact, he did a lot of college basketball. He worked with the NCAA and he covered a bunch of tournaments and uh, most famously, he was at the radio microphone of the Christian Leitner shot when Duke shocked Kentucky. Grant Hill goes three quarter court pass to Christian Leitner and boom, Duke wins a big basketball game and Marty Brenneman was all over that. So we're gonna talk to him about all of that in his career. And of course the, uh, the national championship, Kansas coming back from 16 points down to beat his Tar Heels and so much more. That is episode one, part one as such. Enjoy it. Welcome once again to In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics in our outstanding studios as always. And you talk about an outstanding guest. I mean, I, this is my name for this individual right here. I call this man legend because he is a legend. I'm talking about Marty Brenneman, the icon, the man. And, uh, and, and so for, for so many reasons, there's no question about it. And, uh, and I know you're enjoying life now, Marty. And, and uh, you're, you're, you're in North Carolina, aren't you? You're enjoying yourself down there. Tell us a little bit about where you are and why you're there. <clears throat> Well, I tell you, Dave, I, we, I owned a condominium in, in Siesta Key uh, since 1998 with a red train down there and had it all these years and redid it. And we got to the point where we really didn't use it all that much. And so Amanda said to me sometime early last fall, would you consider selling it? And I said, yeah, I'd consider selling it. But I said, where the heck are we going to go? And she said, what about finding a place to live in Salisbury, North Carolina, which is a town that I began my radio career in when I graduated from North Carolina in 1965. Wow. I, I did high school football and basketball. I did uh, college football and basketball and did American Legion baseball. Wow. And worked five years here uh, and I was not very good, but they couldn't pay me enough money to be good immediately. And it was a great proving ground for me. Uh, and I love the town. And I love the people. And Amanda had been back here enough so that she had made some friends here. We'd come back periodically and visit. So we bought this place, uh, sold the place in Florida, bought the place here. Um, and uh, we, I, I enjoy coming back here. It brings back a lot of memories. There's a small town college here, Catawba College, um, which I've done some fundraising work for. And so, you know, we're happy. We're, we're close to Charlotte. We're close to Greensboro. I'm about an hour and 25 minutes away, uh, 20 minutes away from Chapel Hill. Uh, so it's, it's a pretty good setup. It really is. That's amazing. I mean, you know, talk about life coming full circle. You yeah. Know, it, it, it's uh, go back to, uh, to where it all started for you. I'm, I'm sure you, how, how many friends that uh, you made back in 65 are still there for you today? Uh, about a half a dozen. Yeah. Great. And, and, and these are guys that, you know, back when I was, uh, my first radio job and uh, doing football and basketball at the college, I developed friendships from people in the college community. And, you know, when I lived here, we, we raised a little bit of hell over the course of the year. <laughs> and, uh, and so I still have those good memories. And, and it's, it's, it's a win-win situation for me. Um, the condominium we bought here is just amazingly nice. It's in a very upscale community. One right. of those deals where when somebody puts it on the market, they don't go through a realtor. It's strictly man to man. And I would have had no way of knowing about it had it not been for my friends here. Yeah. One of the guys was a bank teller um, and I rose to the position of bank president before he retired a few years ago. And he lives right around the corner from me here. So it's, 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 uh, I, I, uh, and this will be, be honest about it now. Um, I'll be 80 years old in July. Unbelievable. And I, Man, well, you look great, gonna, Marty. You look great. Well, I appreciate that. But I, I ain't going to be around forever. And I really believe that after I'm gone, Amanda will probably move here and live here full time because she likes it so much. That's awesome. That is great. 
you deserve it. You deserve all the happiness that, uh, that can be afforded to anybody because you made a lot of people happy for a lot of years with, with, uh, things you did. Let, let's hit a little bit. Uh, you said Chapel Hill is, uh, yeah. is within <laughs> reasonable distance. And, and I know as a, as a proud graduate, that had to be, uh, a cocktail of emotions last night, watching that, uh, that, that championship tilt when they had the, the, the 15 point halftime lead 40, 25 thought, wow. And then end up uh, coming back from a 16 point deficit, the largest deficit ever to come from behind and, and win a national title for the Kansas Jayhawks. What was it like for you as a, as a North Carolina graduate watching that Marty? You know, it was really interesting Dave, because, um, I, I was involved in the NCAA, I, I, I think 16 regional final fours and then 10 final fours. Yep. And the one thing that I took away from all those great years, because I don't think there's an event like the NCAA tournament, um, is that this, the, the semifinal day, which was Saturday, the national semifinals, to me, I know this will be contrary to you after what you've just experienced in this past season with Joe and the gang. Right. I think the national final day is the finest day in, the, in, the, in sports in a calendar year. It's almost like, and, and, I, and I could draw a correlation, I think, to some extent with the Super Bowl. It's anticlimactic. Once you get there, you, you've climbed a hell of a hill in getting there. Right. And I think uh, the Bengals proved that this past fall. Um, you, you have to be good. You have to have breaks. You have to have a little bit of luck. Uh, but getting there is almost anticlimactic. And after the two semifinal games, uh, when when Duke, uh, when Carolina beat Duke Saturday, and and then uh, Kansas knocked off Villanova, the championship game for me, uh, I'd have been thrilled had they won it. But the fact that they got there when nobody gave them a, a living, breathing chance. Right. Uh, uh, most people did not have them going beyond the Sweet 16, and I was one of those guys. I picked them to get beat the second game. Um, so they didn't win it. Uh, they had an opportunity to win it, and they didn't, uh, but it was a great experience. And I think the one thing that all those people that are Carolina fans will take from it, and I certainly did, they beat Duke two out of three. And at the end of the day, that's very, very important. There's no doubt. I mean, that's that was – you talk about a – a game, an instant classic, immediate instant classic. That Duke Carolina game to get to the uh, championship was yeah. unbelievable. I mean, kids played at a high, high level. I mean, it, it, you look at what what uh, North Carolina did. I mean, it, it, halfway through the season, it was like I'm not sure they're even going to be a tournament team. You know, and I think they, I think last night they were saying there were four losses by. 20 or more points that Carolina experienced. And that's right. And then they, they, they got it together. And, and another good example, I mean, the Bengals on December 12th, uh, they lost at home to the San Francisco 49ers in overtime, a damn good team. Yeah. Fall seven and six. And I thought, yeah, can they make the plastic? Man? All of a sudden he goes six and one. They only lost the Super Bowl, and they're playing their best football at the best time. The most right. time. Carolina does the same thing. And that's what it's all about. Right. Getting hot at the right time. Yeah, and, and you know what, <clears throat> I'm sure that Coach Taylor did some things to technically, strategically uh, with that football team that played into the winning six of their last seven games. Yep. It's like Hubert Davis, who's a rookie coach. He's only, the I think, the eighth uh, first-year coach ever to take his team to the final, uh, to the championship game. Right. It, once he learned that he did not have the depth, that he sought early in the year. He tried to bring these guys off the bench to give their his regulars a blow every now and then. It didn't work because he his, the talent level dropped off drastically. Once he decided that this is what I got, I got five guys that can really play, and if I have to play them 36 minutes a game, then that's exactly what I'm going to do, and that's what he did. Uh, the other thing is his guards matured, although they were horrible last night, R.J. Davis and Caleb Love. Right. But – they were instrumental in getting him to the championship game. So this is going to go down as a special uh, uh, Carolina basketball team. And there'll be a number of guys that will be going off this team just like anybody else. But it was a fun season to watch, especially the last couple of months. I tell you, they, they were tough-minded, uh, believed. I, it, it, was, it was amazing. I mean, they, they 
so many come from behind victories and uh and then they they experience one that you know Kansas put on them it's tough there's no doubt I mean that 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 basketball game will stay with them yeah for a while, obviously but that's right like you said, you get there and you gave it all you had. You know, that's all you can ask for. Right. Hubert Davis just seems to be a universally well-liked guy. I mean, th this guy seems to be very special. He's unbelievable, Dave. He And he's genuine. I mean, what right. you see is what you get. Uh, those kids all love him. And, and you, uh, the fact of the matter is, you know, Roy retired so quickly without any uh, without any announcement. Uh, Dean did the same thing, uh, and Roy did it. So um, uh, Hubert got to the Final Four with Roy Williams' uh, talents, his recruits. Right. And he changed things. He didn't do a lot of the same things that Roy did. That uh, Roy did more things because of the influence Dean Smith had on him than Hubert Davis has done with the uh, influence that Roy Williams had on him. Some of the things he's kept in, in their folio, but at the same time, he's his own man. Um, he, he did a wonderful job and I, they picked a guy. I really believe it was going to be either Hubert Davis or Wes Miller and mm. Wes got the UC job. Right. And, and that's not to say that one day, if, if for some reason Hubert Davis leaves and, and, and Wes has the kind of success that I think he's going to have at UC, um, I, I just not beyond the realm of possibility that one day Wes Miller could, could coach Carolina. You mentioned uh, a little bit earlier, Marty, about your experiences with NCAA basketball as a broadcaster. And uh, I, the greatest play and maybe the greatest game ever played, Duke, Kentucky. You're, you're at the microphone when Rand Hill throws the ball, the basketball three-quarter length of the court, and Leitner catches it, turnaround jumper, boom. Uh, Duke wins that basketball game. What was that like, calling that game? Well, uh yeah, you know, I've been lucky because I think that I've been involved in two games uh, that arguably, and people will argue all the time, one, a lot of people consider the greatest baseball game ever played. That was game six of the World Series when Fisk hit the home run in the 11th yep. inning to win it and set it to yep. game seven. And the Kentucky-Duke game played at uh, the Spectrum in Philadelphia for the right to go to the Final Four. Um, you know, I... I was, I'd done Kentucky games a number of years before on their local state network, which no longer exists anymore, but Larry Conley and I did those games. Um, and so I had a lot of friends down there. And of course, as far as Duke is concerned, I worked in the ACC for three years. Uh, Mike Krzyzewski was wonderful to me. Even though he knew I was a Carolina guy, I tried to be as, uh, I was not biased in any way when I did a Carolina Duke game. Right. Um, and we felt probably in the closing minutes of the, the uh, about the halfway point of the second half, um, the, the technical guys that I was working with, we all looked at each other in a commercial break and said, I don't know that I've ever seen a better basketball game than this. <laughs> and then for it to come down the way it did, uh, it was somewhat of a controversial game because uh, Christian Lakner stepped on Aminu Timberlake's chest underneath yep. the basket. Yep. Uh, quite honestly, should have been thrown out of the game. And I'll, I'll, I'll give the Kentucky people their just due. He should have been thrown out, and they couldn't, the officials simply could not bring themselves to do it. Yeah. And then the fact that Rick Pitino did not play the inbounds passer, he didn't put anybody on the baseline to try and jump up and down and wave his hands and all that stuff. So it was an unfettered pass yep. uh, from Grant Hill to Christian Leitner. And I think uh, Darren Feldhouse and, uh, and uh, John Pelfrey, were the two good kids that Patino put on uh, Leitner at the free throw line. And when the ball started down toward Leitner and the two defenders, it was almost as if they both backed away to keep from fouling him. And then of course he caught it, he turned and he had nothing but net. I mean, he, that was, he, he, he did not miss a game in that shot and that game. He made all of his field goal attempts and all of his free throw attempts. And so, you know, I have to admit that knowing how the UK fans felt about Leitner and how they still do, every baseball season, every single season, without exception, I'd be doing a game and I'd say to myself, in my mind, I'd say, well, tonight's a night. 
And then I would casually figure out a way to get Christian Leitner's name out there. <laughs> and the Kentucky fans would raise hell. I mean, they lose their minds. And I'd just do it just to tweak them a little bit. If they were going to sleep somewhere and they heard that name, they'd wake up. I did it every year. Um, I, I, was, I was blessed. And I remember one of the things I said at the end of the game was, it's unfortunate that this game has to end because it was so good. Um, and also the, the person, the side note, it was Kay Wood Ledford's last game as a voice of the Kentucky Wildcats, one of the great college basketball announcers in the history of the game. And when the game ended and all the emotion of a Duke win on Leitner's shot and the pain that the Kentucky kids had to suffer right. along with, uh, uh, everybody else who followed the Kentucky basketball team, Krzyzewski raced across the floor. First thing he did, came across the floor and sat down for five minutes with Kay Wood Ledford on the Kentucky Network telling him what a, what a great person he'd been to the college sports and college basketball. And it was, it was really a class act without any question. I'll tell you, that, that guy, Mike Krzyzewski, um, the first time that I ran across him, I was a sophomore in high school at a basketball camp that Bob Knight was uh, instructing at as the head coach at West Point. And he had his captain, right. Senior Mike Krzyzewski, was there with him at the camp. And I met him when I was a sophomore in, in high school, you know, in that in that vein. And he was unbelievable to all yeah. of us, all the campers. Just an unbelievable guy. Then I got to meet him um, doing some college football. He did a game at Duke and, and got to meet him, go to a practice and meet him. Just a tremendous guy. And, you know, like you say, he's just such a class person. The thing that impressed me after that Duke North Carolina game, he goes to midcourt and waits, and he's all by himself <clears throat> waiting to shake hands. And you don't see any Duke players or any assistant, nobody else, but Mike Shishesky is right there. Right. He hands immediately. That just tells me everything I need to know about Mike Shishesky as a as a as a competitor and as a you know a person that gets it. You know, I mean, unbelievable. Yeah, he. Uh, well, for my money, and uh, you know, I'm in I'm in Tar Heel country down here, and. I uh, went over with a uh, man that I did to watch the game with a bunch of Carolina friends of ours last night. And uh, the passion of hate that the Carolina people in this state have for Duke people is beyond me. I have a hard time grasping that. Yeah. I happen to think, and it's like, it's heresy if you say it here in Carolina. I think that he's the greatest coach in the history of the sport. I mean, he transcends everything. And the reason why... Uh, aside from the fact that he's the winningest coach in college basketball history, he won three gold medals in a row yep. with a bunch of superstars from the N N NBA that knew nothing other than one-on-one -on -one basketball in that league. Mm -hmm. He got the likes of LeBron James and Kobe Bryant, God rest his soul, and all the rest of those players to play as a team. There have been other coaches that failed miserably in trying to do that. He was able to do it, and for that reason alone, along with all the great things he's done at college, most of that at Duke, he's the best coach in the history of basketball as far as I'm concerned. Hmm. Well said, well said. And, boy, what a tournament. I mean, the, the, uh, so many of the, uh, of the games in this year's tournament were just incredible. I mean, yeah. it, it's just a heck of an NCAA tournament. The NFL had a good run in, in, in playoff games in both conferences, NFC and AFC and a – you know, a pretty well contested uh, Super Bowl to boot. Right. But I I agree with you, boy. The the, the final four, and, and even the Elite Eight. You know, to get to the final four, that is just always it never lets you down. It's always just great competition, great basketball. And you always have a team like St. Peter's. I yes. mean, that that was you know they captivated the hearts of so many people across the country. Yep. And and I really felt you know they'd had the great run, and then they met Carolina. And I, and I felt then, I said, you know, they can't keep this up. They've got to crash and burn at some point. And, and Carolina's uh, talents, um, I'm sure Carolina's history, all of that played into the fact that it all ended for those kids there. Again, that doesn't take away from what was a very special basketball season for the St. Peter's Peacocks. And uh, that's a team that's going to be re remembered on that campus as long as the game of basketball is played. Speaking of... Uh great history and great tradition as we talk about college basketball and the NCAA tournament. Let's, let's shift gears now to the, to the Cincinnati Reds, uh, a team that, you know, a little something about you that done, much. done a thing or two with the Reds, you know, yeah. 
the legend, the Hall of Famer himself. And honestly, Marty, I mean, you are as good as there ever has been doing baseball. But I loved listening to you doing hoops, bro. You are you you are a tremendous play-by-play guy for basketball. Tremendous. Well, I appreciate that. I, I nobody loved it more than I did. I tell you that. I, I tell, again, you know, and I'm and I and you know, I kind I I text you, and I text Dan Horde, and the thing I said to you guys was, enjoy every second of what you're getting ready to experience because right. it may not happen again. It's right. easy to say that we get, we we got a real good chance of going back next year. And 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 they do because they're talented and I think they've improved themselves right. since the season ended with with the signings and and trades that they've made to improve on their line play and give Burrow more protection. But so many things have to happen. You know, when the Reds won back-to-back championships in 75 and 76, we all said they may win 6 or 7 in a row and they don't win again until 1990. There's just so many things that happen. And so you really have to cherish every moment of it. And in your eye, mind's eye, take pictures and remember the great things that you and Dan experienced as a broadcast team. And, and hopefully you get back there for the next 15 years. But there's no guarantee, no matter how good you are. No doubt about it. And, and for the Reds, even to win back-to-back, you yeah. know, 75 and 76, it's, it's, it is. It's a, it's a tough thing to do. It's a big old target on your back, and there's a lot of things that have to, have to break right. At First Star Logistics, we're a very strict company that really puts the pressure on our employees. Brakes? What are those? That's what I'm talking about, Icky. Get the body right, then the mind's right. You know, yeah. you know, you gotta get that body right. That's so. right. Yes, sir. Become a star with a chance to earn the highest commission percentages in the industry as a freight broker agent. Check out FirstStarLogistics.com.